Hey everybody, you're listening to KRUI in Iowa City. This is I Hear I See Radio. My name is Justin Comer. I am joined today by my co-host. Hello, I'm Carlos. Can you say that again? I'm testing the mic. Hello, hello. Uh, All right, yeah, that works. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Okay. Uh, (laughs) if this is your first time tuning into our radio show, I Hear I See is a weekly show and monthly concert series highlighting local Iowa City and the surrounding areas, musicians and poets and all other performing artists. And today we have a few of those performers in studio with us. Uh, Let's see, I'm going to start with you. My name is Ian Draves. Ian Draves, who is the bassist for the band Soul Sherpa. I'm also joined by... My name is Lucas Jack. Lucas, the drummer for the band Soul Sherpa. And uh, Nico Lurkins. Nico, guitarist for the band Soul Sherpa. For those of you not watching the video, um, Justin's making so very dramatic, pointing at people before. <laughs> I'm queuing. I'm queuing everybody in. And uh, if you do want to watch us on video, uh, go to either the Soul Sherpa Facebook page or the I Hear I See Facebook page or my personal profile. Again, my name is Justin Comer. So it's all over. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Everyone can watch us and listen to us. We are big time media experts today <laughs> all right so uh let's get things started right off you guys are in a band yeah. i've mentioned the name Apparently. several times <laughs> to get them to get it in people's ears you are soul sherpa that's us and uh you've got some big stuff coming soon would you like to tell us about that yeah um we have a our first full-length record coming out um Technically, the album will be released on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, which is the 6th, I think. Yes, I'm that's right. Thinking of dates right. And then uh, the album release show, which will be here in Iowa City at the Mill, uh, March 9th, starts at 8 o'clock. Um, yeah. So yeah. we were releasing an album that's almost been a year. We recorded it back in June of last year. So it's almost oh, well. been a year since we've... June of 2017. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a long time coming. Yeah. So... Uh, Let's see. You've got a lot more members than there are in the studio today. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to call anyone out by name? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Like we said, we got Lucas and, and Nico here. Uh, and then we have our illustrious horn section, which is DeRosha Guamna on trombone and Hank Welter on tenor sax, uh, Casey, who doubles on keyboards, but also alto sax, and then uh, Mr. Ben Jury on the trumpet. Uh, the rest of our rhythm section, we have... Uh, uh, Shadow Wolf Evans, who plays auxiliary percussion, and uh, our singer and keyboard player, Sean Fligger, uh, and then our other singer, uh, Nikki Lynn, um, and our guest singer that's on a couple of the songs on that album, too, which is Inga Alexson. I think I got everybody. Did I get everybody? I think so. Yeah. I was following along, and yeah. you did. You did. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sometimes there's the, too many people, I forget <laughs> them, and I started just throwing out names. Yeah. Uh, and you had a, a different guitarist in the recording? Yes, is that yeah. Correct? Okay. Um, we had Casper Huggins on the recording and everything, good friend of ours, and he uh, ended up moving up to Minneapolis to be a luthier. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. He went to Red Wing University to learn how to fix and make instruments. So we found this guy on the street and <laughs> decided to give him a guitar, and he's Lazy doing a great job. It was, it was very weird. It's a very weird process. Which street? Uh, what street was that? Was that? Uh, Do we have a red light district in Cedar Rapids? <laughs> probably, probably around my house on Center Point Road. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Nice part of town. <laughs> uh, yeah, so people leaving for Minneapolis, yeah. we've experienced that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Our previous partner, Kasia Lazinski, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll miss you. Yeah. You should come back. I don't know why. Just yeah. for us. Yeah. I mean, she came back for your wedding and then for my wedding. So That's true. Yeah, she's been back a couple times. Yeah. We just and need our... another wedding and then she'll be back. Yeah, any of you guys getting married soon? <laughs> uh, our trumpet player got married. Uh, not that I know of. Earlier oh. this year. Are you getting married? I don't think so. No? Right. I'm not getting married. <laughs> Nico, you didn't answer. No, no, not, not anytime soon. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, you played at that wedding, right? We did, yes. Yeah. It was quite the event. Mm-hmm. It was uh, very beautiful. I don't think you could have asked for a better day. Like, it was an, oh, yeah. a gorgeous yeah. day when we played that wedding. Um, beautiful rolling Illinois hills, like <laughs> like out in the country, kind of secluded kind of thing. It was, yeah, it was nice. It was very pretty. 
And then there was, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. <laughs> so you recorded this last summer. Yes. So can I ask what's been taking so long? Um, some of it is just uh, normal album kind of stuff, you know, making sure it's mixed correctly, mastered correctly. Um, some of it is uh, practicality. I mean, we, I think the album was pretty much done. Um, it mixed and mastered and ready to go. I want to say right around l- like mid to late October, early mm-hmm. November. And when you think about it, you know, releasing an album and then you want to tour with the album and sell as much as you possibly can, playing winter shows in Iowa is not going to be the best <laughs> way of doing it. And yep. um, we recorded at Flat Black Studios and Luke Tweedy, who works there, is he's a fantastic um, engineer and he knows so much about the music world. So he was giving us some some suggestions and was like, yeah, you, no offense. He's like, you'd be kind of dumb if you would try to release it in like November, like wait, release it in the spring and, you know, really make, make moves with it. So mm-hmm. we decided to do that. Cool. Yeah. Let's go back uh, and dig into the recording process a little bit. Absolutely. So you guys were at Flat Black Studios. Which uh, is outside Iowa City? Pretty much. It's, uh, I think, Lone Tree. Okay. Yes, it's, 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 it is Lone Tree. Lone yeah, Tree yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so how long how long did you guys spend recording this? Don't tell anybody this. Uh, four days. We were actually wow. in and nice. out of the re- marathon. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was four days. Uh, I give again Luke tons of props because we were just telling our other interviewee earlier today that um, we had I think there's there was ten people in the band with our guest singer Inga. So there was eleven people plus some significant others that were there and other and then we had a two people team to record our music videos so we had like 15 16 people in that studio and it's not it's not a small studio by any means but it was it's like a barn isn't it yeah it's a barn yeah so it's a bunch of pigs in a barn (laughs) it's an active farmhouse yeah Yeah. it smelled like a barn and you know (laughs) by the time we were done at least uh but yeah it was pretty crazy so you knocked it out in four days yeah nice all the tracking Four days we have it's on our Facebook, but there's a picture. We brought a gigantic whiteboard and to keep track of make sure we recorded everything that we were going to record on it. So <laughs> So on that, were you recording most of the stuff as a band at the same time or separated or Yeah, uh I mean it's part of the main reason why we ended up going there uh for the first place. Uh because it we wanted to do as much of the album live as we okay. possibly could. Um, you know, and it's hard to get 10 people in a room and not make the microphones bleed and yeah. you know everything like that so uh we recorded all the rhythm section stuff was completely live we were all in the same room when that happened and then the the horns recorded overdubbing over that and then vocals were overdubbed all over that so but every like the true essence of the band was all yeah. recorded live yeah yeah that's very cool it's a lot uh i don't know i feel like you can hear a difference between albums where it's like the band's t- recording together and it's like multi-tracked I, one at a time yeah i want to think that you can hear it <laughs> i mean i pretend i can even okay. if i can't <laughs> yeah that's good enough yeah uh maybe uh we've been talking about it for a while should we listen to some of it let's go for it okay what track yeah. should i play uh let's, let's start with uh might as well start with uh love is universal we yeah do that, let's one. Do that one okay love is universal and it's got inga alexson on vocals on that one cool so is this like premiere of this song ever yeah um nice. we recorded the song we've we've never showed it to anybody besides the band and then maybe some close friends and everything yeah. um and we've never played the song live either we're oh playing, wow we're wow. playing the song live for the first time we've ever played it live uh we'll be at the mill okay right. so this is the uh, premiere of the studio recording yeah yes. and then it'll premiere live this friday at the mill absolutely all right yeah. here is love universal by soul sherpa Place of universal reverence. 
Let's believe I will achieve Peace place for the family Well, it may not seem like Glitz and glamour No time to pry the love Your heart edge like a hammer My head is filled with hope A plan consumes my time There always was some angel on my shoulder Kinda kept it going on this long Without knowing the right from wrong Start talking. <laughs> oh, there we are. We're talking. Hey, hey, hey. Nothing We're back. Happened. Nothing okay. Happened. So that was uh, spacing out. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, that was uh, <laughs> that was Love Is Universal from Soul Sherpa's upcoming album. Oh. Same wave train. Sorry, I had to double check. Uh, so that's coming out Tuesday. Yes. Uh, that's the first time anyone's heard that recording. Yes, right? that is okay. the first time. Premiere material here yes. on I R I hear I see radio. <laughs> to totally say the name worth, of the show right. It is worth it. To listen to us live, yeah, yeah, since yeah. today, <laughs> no one heard, no one heard that before now. <laughs> and we know that our keyboard and singer's mom was on the live chat, and yeah. she heard it. So, so there you go. Yeah, I know that she, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, maybe we can go back a little further before the uh, recording the album. How'd you guys start playing together? Um. Yeah, uh, me and Lucas here, we went to Kirkwood Community College together, uh, played in jazz bands and stuff like that. And once we got done with our education, 
there, um, I kind of decided I wanted to put together a band. Um, I played in a lot of jazz music stuff, and I played in a lot of uh, like blues and rock stuff around the area. And I realized if you go to a rock show, you get a lot of people energized, but they, they're they jumping around and everything like that. Or you go to a jazz show, and everybody respects what you're doing, but they give you golf claps. <laughs> um, and I wanted to make something that was going to be kind of in, in between using the harmony and com- complexity of jazz, but put it in a fun kind of danceable poppy sense to make people want to dance and you know give a little bit of everything for everybody so um me and lucas got together and uh couldn't find anyone else i couldn't find (laughs) anybody but that's that's a good point that's a good point to bring up just there already so (laughs) you know he's retainable you know he's just around you know even if you want him or not you know um and uh we got with our original guitar player uh we went to kirkwood with him as well and the band just kept growing uh we played one of our first shows and casey as you know was at that show and came up to us and was like i'm gonna audition to be in your band he didn't say like hey how's it going guys like that was the first thing that came out of his mouth (laughs) straight Um, to business yeah and so he um joined the band and then he knew ben and derosia and got them in the band and he knew inga and got inga to come sing with us and everything like that so it started as a four piece five piece kind of idea and then within about a year transformed into a 10 piece funk soul band <laughs> yeah just exponential growth yeah it was yeah it was kind of crazy all right i hate to cut you off i gotta play a public service announcement real quick go for it you guys are gonna love it here it comes iowa affirmation and resources chat Iowa Arch, for short, is a free, safe, and confidential online space for survivors of abuse, bullying, harassment, stalking, sexual assault, and other types of violence at Iowa. At Iowa Arch, we offer anonymous one-on-one support and referrals in four languages. If you're looking for help for yourself or a loved one, use a safe device to chat with us at iowaarch.org. That's I-O-W-A-A-R-C-H dot O-R-G. Remember, it's free, anonymous, and confidential. We're here to support you. To support you. Wait, I feel could, supported. You're looking at them, but they I feel supported. No, nobody on the video could hear that, but yeah. that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so it I'm looked like 30 seconds of 30 weird seconds. Yeah. Just, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm compensating for two different audiences at once. Okay. Maybe okay. we should take different roles here. No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you perform for the video. No, I think it's, it's you're not right. even on the video right now. Oh yeah, that's right. There's another guy there. Uh, see his there's hand. his hand. Look at it. For the listeners, um, we have a phone set up doing a <laughs> Facebook Live video right now. Uh, you know, go to the go to the Facebook page. I hear, I see, or the Soul Sherpa Facebook page. Oh yeah, you can watch along. Yeah, it's probably a weird experience to try to do both at the same time because I know there's a delay on the video. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so when we left off for that PSA, we were talking about the formation of the band, how you immediately exploded into a 10-piece band. Uh, what are your live shows like? Um, our live shows... Do you want to talk about that? I'm talking a lot. Do you want, you've been in the band long enough. You know things <laughs> yeah, about it. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so our live shows are definitely uh, high energy, a lot of fun. We try and put our sets together in a way where... Um, you're getting some originals in there, but also some covers, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that are well-known covers that people like to hear. Uh, so, what kind of covers we've done? Who do you play? Uh, yeah, so we play uh, like "Sign Seal Delivered" by Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. uh, "I Want You Back" by Jackson Five. Um, those are some big ones that people obviously recognize, um, and so we sort of sprinkle those in the set along with the uh, original music and everything. So, cool. keep it. Sort of different, but but fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make it a party. Yeah, that's the goal. Get people moving. And then, are you always performing with everybody, or do you change the number of people performing depending on the venue and stuff like that? Um, it just kind of depends. I mean, uh, unfortunately, the band is not glamorous enough to be able to pay our rent and all of our bills, so we all have full time jobs, which. Um, you know, so sometimes it's just hard to get uh, ten people who all have full time jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are engaged or married, and and everything else. So uh, I have a child, so we all have our things that we have to worry about. So sometimes, I mean, the band performs uh, anywhere from about the minimum is about five or six people. Okay. We can play a show with about five or six people, and uh, obviously for the bigger shows and stuff like that, we always try to get everybody there. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of the time, I mean, that's the beauty of the band is we have a lot of fun on stage, and not only on stage but together, as you know, we're just good friends with each other. So. It's not one of those things. It doesn't feel like work. It's just fun, you know. And so a lot of the people will come and hang out just to play, you know, just to have a good time. So, mm-hmm. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, in our experience, I think pretty much everyone we talk to has some sort of job during oh, yeah. the day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know if I know any full time performing musicians in my life. It's, uh, it's hard out here. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, what do you mean? No, like, I mean, I mean personally. Like, does the Jack Quartet count? I don't know. I guess. Mm, sure. Yeah. We'll count them. So I know four people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. and, that's, and that's the thing, you know, if you mean, if you are a full-time musician around here, you're generally playing shows and then you're also probably doing some type of arranging or writing in the, mm-hmm. on the side for other schools and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you're teaching and, you know, yeah. you may have a part-time job where you're selling refrigerators. Who knows? It's Sears or something, you know, but <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, there's not many people around here that who can literally just be music all the time mm-hmm. and yeah. get away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... On that subject, um, have you guys done a lot of touring so far? We have not done any touring. Okay. Um, we are kind of we don't have any specific uh, gigs or dates to announce right now, but we are booking our uh, first touring this summer. We're going to be nice. touring into the Madison, Wisconsin area, Chicago, Illinois, um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and out like a couple of different towns in Colorado this wow. summer okay. is what we're planning on doing. Very yeah. cool, but. Uh, I will say, you say you haven't done any touring, but you're not just like a Cedar Rapids, Iowa City band. You uh, have gone to other places Yeah, in we've, Iowa. we've played Western <clears throat> Iowa. We've played uh, Southern Minnesota, Eastern Illinois, uh, or Western Illinois, um, you know, all around the Eastern Iowa area, too. So, yeah. I mean, we've played, you know, pretty pretty far out. I mean, mm-hmm. the farthest gig out has probably been about four or four and a half hours, but, you know. Hey, that's a drive. Yeah, yeah it is. And actually, you're not all based in the same city no right right now uh we have one person in dubuque Mm -hmm. uh four four or five people in cedar rapids another three or four in iowa city and then uh uh, casey lives in wisconsin so oh wow yeah we're all i didn't know that (laughs) yeah casey lives all the way in in wisconsin so um it's a trek yeah yeah so that i imagine makes it a little more difficult to play live as a full band uh you know uh Casey is a very versatile type of person, so uh, when we go, that's the beauty of the band. Is th- there is a lot of uh, elements of jazz in it, so it is very improvised. Yeah. Um, sometimes you know we'll have like the general outline of the show figured out, but you know like who's going to solo on a certain tune or, or, you know whatever it might be. That's all dictated on on stage with eye contact and. Lots of hand signals sometimes, like, no, 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 no. no, no. Um, uh, but no, it's pretty much on the fly a lot of the times. Yeah. If you are just listening to the radio show and not uh, watching the video, um, I'll describe. Ian, <laughs> he waved his hands back and forth in a, in a no kind of motion, <laughs> indicating eyes. he does not want a solo right now. Uh, maybe we should play another one. Yeah. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. If you, we can play our first single that we released off the album, "Come Get Down." That's a good one. Come get down. That's got Nikki Lynn on vocals. Okay, come get down. We can play that one. This is Soul Sherpa. Come get down from their upcoming album, "Same Wave Train," which will be released this Tuesday. There it goes. There it is. <laughs> i 
Okay, that was Come Get Down off of Soul Sherpa's new album, Same Wave Train. I've got three of the band members in the studio with us today, and uh, it's about time for me to tell you the weather report. Carlos, you're looking at your phone. Would you like to do the weather report? Well, I was thinking about making the joke of uh, doing the weather report in the right uh, degrees. Oh, you're going to go into Celsius, huh? Yes. Okay. Oh, here Instead of your monstrosity of degrees that don't make any sense. If you can't tell from Carlos's accent, he is from <laughs> abroad. <laughs> uh, so I will do the Fahrenheit, and then you you come back with the Celsius. How's yeah, that? Okay. That. So current temperature is 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Which is 8 degrees Celsius. You can notice that is. It feels cold, so it's eight. So it's close to zero, <laughs> so it all makes sense. Is that what that means? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and according to weather.com, it actually feels like it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit. See, it feels like it's three, which means it feels like it's almost freezing. Mm-hmm. Oof. It all makes sense. Sure. Oof. It's so good. <laughs> uh, precipitation is 0%. It's cloudy. 42% humidity. 17 mile per hour winds. Okay. Can That's you give me the kilometers for the wind? No. <laughs> <laughs> a bigger number than 17. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, during the break there, we were discussing what we should talk about next. And uh, we decided we wanted to give give Nico some room to talk to us. So, uh, Nico, what is it like to join this band after two years, two and a half years, two and a roughly, half years. of yeah, work before you jumped in? Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so I was actually <laughs> sorry. All right, good enough. I'm gonna cut the mic. Now. <laughs> and that's it. I was actually a pretty big fan of the band before I joined because I've known these guys for a while. I met them at Kirkwood um, through like jazz band, and the original guitarist for the band. So I kind of like saw the band come up uh, from its uh, humble beginnings, <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see like how far everything's come. I think some of the first couple shows that Soul Sherpa played, I was either in attendance or it was, uh, you know, I had a house party a few years ago. These guys played at. So you hosted one of their gigs. Yeah, oh, that's oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I, I lived with uh, you know the original guitar player. Uh-huh. So 
you know, we decided to throw a party, and he was like, "Hey, let's just have Soul Sherpa play," and it was it was awesome. <laughs> I can't remember. Did you did you pay us for that, or did you just pay us in beer? <laughs> it was it was beer. You yeah, got a house we cup. paid yeah, for, okay. we paid yeah. for beer. We we probably won't do that anymore, so don't ask us. But <laughs> it was just compensation. Oh. At the I don't time. know. That's open for discussion. Let's <laughs> 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 not put any. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, you signed a contract, and he. Uh, the stipulation was in two and a half years i will join the band and that's the payment um so funny story uh yeah we signed that contract and i was looking over it and then there was in very very tiny comic sans print uh was i will join your band in two and a half years and uh here we are today i guess (laughs) sneaky man in your paperwork he showed up he had a copy of it (laughs) i'm here (laughs) time to cash in uh okay um you don't want to spill the details on these tour dates you have in the summer. Uh, I would spill it if I had much more information. Yeah, you we actually it. have somebody, uh, a local Iowa person. I'm not going to throw him underneath the bus because I don't know if he'd want me to. <laughs> but he is uh, doing our booking for us for out-of-state okay. stuff. So uh, about a week ago, I gave him a list of dates that we can possibly do. And mm-hmm. he is, I think he said today, this morning, he told me he sent out 40-plus emails. Nice. So hopefully we'll be getting something back here, I'd imagine. So <laughs> Yeah. That sounds good. Having a booking agent. I don't like sending those emails myself. <laughs> it's the it's the worst. So how did you guys deal with that before you had a someone booking for you? Uh, and, I Let's mean, go through the process. Everyone yeah. everyone loves to hear about this. Oh man, um, that's the funny thing is when we started the band. I did not realize how much work it was going to be. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, we'll just play good music and people will like it and they'll come and we'll get paid. Yeah, duh. That's how it works. Like, yeah. but it's, it's, Step one, play it's music. Not, <laughs> Step not two, how it works. get paid. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so a lot of stuff I had to learn al- al- along the way, you know. Um, uh, I've had other bands and other friends help us out with kind of like, you should use your social media presence like this or mm-hmm. uh, how to contact a venue and everything like that. Because when you're first starting, you're just like, yeah, we'll, we'll take a gig. <laughs> you got five bucks? Cool. Yeah. Is there a drink special? No? Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, and then later on, you know, now we're at the point where we get offered gigs quite frequently and we can turn them down because it's like, wow. yeah, we want to bring in all you guys, just 10 people, uh, and we have $50 for you. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, eh, no offense, but I'm not paying my guys what that would equate down to $2.50 yeah. a piece. You know, it's like, it's not going to happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, it's like a yeah. Red Bull at the gas station. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Want to um, call anyone out by name? Any <laughs> venues? <laughs> you better be ready for this. No, um, no. And the thing is, you know, the, the venues that offer us that are sometimes the same venues that will offer us playing with a lot of cool touring national acts or playing a festival and stuff like that. So there's there's love and hate. I it's think. hard. There's just not money around. Yeah, and it's yeah. partially, yeah. I mean, that's partially the area where we play in. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's up to any good advice for up and coming bands. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I could, a few bullet points. One, um, define your expectations very early on. Uh, I've seen a lot of bands just uh, kind of fall to the wayside just because they. One person might be like, "I'm in it for the fame," and the other person's like, "I'm in it for the money," and the other person's like, "Well." I just like to hang out with my friends and play a guitar, you know, like (laughs) just making sure that everybody, regardless if you guys don't see the band the same way, as long as they all understand what the goal, you know, is the horizon is in front of you. Um, Another really good uh, solid thing is just learn how to use social media. It's so important these days. Like, and I'm not even that great at it. I've learned over the last three years how to suck at it royally. And that's Mm -hmm. got me much better at it. Um, But finding out how to do that. I mean, you know, knowing, uh, when it's prime time to post things and, mm. and everything, like nobody's gonna like your post if you post it at like one thirty during the day and everybody's at work mad. You know, they might be surfing through their phone and like, oh, they might click. Right. It, but what if I'm at do. work mm. on my phone all day? <laughs> <laughs> it's good for those people. <laughs> well, we work for the same place, Justin. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> I try uh, to keep them out of my conversations here. That's probably <laughs> good. That's probably good. Uh, and then finally, I mean. Um, you know, understand uh, everybody in your band, if it's a 10-piece or a three-piece, whatever it is, uh, know everybody in your band and, and fight for them. Like, if you're leading your band, fight for them. Don't just, like, try to, um, you know, try to get by. Like, 
respect the people in your band for what they are and help them grow. That's the big thing that I do with our band is I try to give as many opportunities for them as well as myself, but you know, to excel their playing and get them the recognition that they deserve. You so know. fight all the members in your band. Yes. 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 Dominate <laughs> dominance okay. all the yeah. time. Ian's yeah. the boss. You guys are, are below him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my subordinates. <laughs> We're henchmen. That's what yeah. we're. <laughs> Do you guys have like some sort of democratic system when you make decisions? Big, no. Big things? No. Uh, no. I, I, not to say that in a rude way because it kind of came off that way. Um, we we no. started that way. Um, you know, the first year in the band, it was like, who wants to play this gig? And it got to the point where it's like we were getting gigs turned down and stuff because it took us way too long to make a decision. Mm, Because some people are like, oh, I have to do this or whatever. And then also when you get, you know, I think it's doable with a three or four man band. But when you have 10 people, you're going to have 10 different opinions. Mm -hmm. And the way, like the way I tell the guys in the band and, it, you know, everybody is just like you either believe that I'm going to do the right thing or you don't. But hopefully you do because I'm not going to do anything uh, that would solely... Our, not only our image or anything like that, but to pro- like promise them that I'm going to do what I can do best for them, not mm-hmm. just myself. Yeah. And I, I know, I mean, I'm looking at it from the outside, but it seems like you guys all trust each other pretty well. I know yeah. most of the guys in the band. This so guy I, might need to find a like you home. like each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like it's working. Yeah. This, it's, yeah. It's, that's the beauty of it being a group of 10 friends, pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Call that working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've reached a lull in the conversation. Might be time to play another track. Play another tune. Um, what dirty? Do, should we do dirty chicken sandwich? Give them a really weird Let's vibe. Do it. Dirty chicken sandwich. Let's okay. Do it. Let's try <laughs> that first, one. The second, well, the second track of the album, but the first real song. Right, right. Anything else you want to say before I play it? Uh, strap in. Yeah, get us ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is dirty chicken sandwich from Soul Sherpa's upcoming album. Same wave train. There it goes.
KRUI is sponsored by Big Grove Brewery. Catch live music every Friday night at 9 p.m. in Big Grove's Iowa City Tap Room located on South Gilbert Street. Tickets are available in advance at littlevillagetickets.com or at the door at the Iowa City Tap Room Bar. All right. Speaking of Big Grove, you guys have played there, right? Yeah, I think we were we played the second weekend they were opened up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Early adopters there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So before that little grant spot, you heard Dirty Chicken Sandwich. Oh, yeah. You guys want to tell us a little bit about how that <laughs> song came to be? Yeah. Um, our drummer here, uh, we rehearse every Sunday. Um, and we generally go and get dinner after we uh, rehearse. And one day we all got into Lucas's Trailblazer, and there was a chicken sandwich that had been in his car. I don't know how long. It was very busy at the time. I just didn't have uh, <laughs> yeah, I've to been clean there. the I've been car. It was. Um, you keep the Burger King bag in there for a couple weeks. hidden underneath the seat. There was the sun. The sun was in my eyes. <laughs> Let's just say it was. It was not normal colored by the time we had. And, and our singer had witnessed it and found it. And he's like, "What is this?" And I think the first thing that came out of your mouth was, "I was saving that for later." Was yeah. that? Or I was, like, was going to eat that. Or yeah. Something. I don't know. Um, Something stupid like that. And we uh, we started jamming on some funk stuff the next week, and we're like, we should call this song Dirty Chicken Sandwich. And then we literally wrote a hook <laughs> called Dirty Chicken Sandwich, uh, and that's how the song came to be. <laughs> From yeah. its beginnings as an actual Dirty Chicken Sandwich. Lu- Lucas's Car Garbage yeah. shame. <laughs> shame song. <laughs> we should just name the song Car Garbage. <laughs> just Car Garbage, yeah. Lucas's uh, Car Garbage, yeah. shame. Yeah. Um, or maybe the next album will just all be things that you found in the car. In the car. Yeah. <laughs> you'll have a tour behind you at that point, so yeah. I'm sure you'll have yeah. a lot of... Oh, lots of material. Material. Yeah. Lots of cargo. Gross, yeah. lots gross of vehicle garbage. incidents. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, so you guys sort of wrote the the lyrics to that collectively or how did that work so there's pr- uh, primarily two uh main writers i would say for the band a lot like and it's it's weird it, it's not to say that we are the two people who amount for all of the music and the and the cd by any means um but me and sean are the primary writers uh casey wrote the title track for this album he wrote same wave train um but a lot of times, especially like my writing process and Sean's writing process is a little bit different. Um, but I will either come up with lyrics or I'll come up with a groove and I'll bring it to the table with the guys and be like, here, these are the three basic chords or whatever. We use more than three chords sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, and then I, since they're all fantastic musicians, I just let them kind of do their thing and we generally come to a consensus. But uh, yeah, I mean, the majority of the lyrics and songs are written, uh, written by me or Sean. Um, I'd say about excluding the the track Same Wave Train, I think Sean's about 60, 65, 70% of the album is written by him and the other 30% or 40% or so is written mm-hmm. by me. So, And you're talking about the entire song, music and lyrics? For the most part, yeah. And like I said, like some of the times the parts are, are dictated way before we bring it to the table. Sometimes it's not. It's just like this is the really rough outline, make it a song. And mm-hmm. I think there was, there was a couple songs where we had just the groove and then Sean wrote lyrics over okay. uh like over the song and i don't know kind of differs from song to song mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh let's see we were talking about social media briefly uh yep. you want to plug your social media pages real quick <laughs> oh man we're so we're obviously if you're watching on the phone there uh <laughs> we're on facebook uh we have a twitter uh we have an instagram we have a snapchat which i think is somewhat rarely used um, we're on SoundCloud, and then obviously our music is now available on Amazon and Google Plus and uh, iTunes and Spotify and all that other stuff. YouTube, uh, we have a YouTube cha- channel with our music videos, and then we have our own website, Soul Sherpa Band dot com. Um, I think that's all we do have. Oh, we have a Bandcamp too, but I, we rarely we reuse it, but rarely, and we also have a SoundCloud that we use. Mm-hmm somewhat rarely as well you already said soundcloud dang it <laughs> someone was keeping a list over there yeah <laughs> just <laughs> we also have a soundcloud <laughs> i was looking at your soundcloud yesterday you've got an ep from i think 2016 yeah. on there oh. yeah yep that's called invest in this 
So oh, yeah. if you want to hear some of the older stuff that's up available. It's, it's there. It's different. You know, it's definitely different from what we do now. But we still play. I think we play almost every track that's on that on that EP still. Some of it sounds different. Two songs on the EP actually made it onto the full album. Oh. Awesome. But they're, they're, I mean, wh- one of them is Acceptance, which is the finishing track for both the EP and for the the uh, CD, um, the new record. But Power Trip, that one's an interesting one because we played it. If you listen to the, the old uh, EP version, it is slow compared to what we play <laughs> it now. Like, we took the same song, same chords and everything, and we're just like, let's just add, like, yeah, 60 BPM. <laughs> <laughs> we dialed it up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what you expect from the title, Power Trip. You oh, want yeah. something, you want, And then like, they gave the solo metal. to the bass player, yeah. so it's like, <laughs> oh, I've seen a video, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. of that solo. Yeah, me sweaty yeah. and yeah. making weird faces at the camera. Yeah, that's what I'm known for, yeah. actually. Um, so also on that subject, um, how would you say that the music has changed um, from when you started to now? Um, I, I'll let you, I'll kind of start off an answer and I'll let sure. you kind of, because yeah. I think you might have some input for this, at least I would hope so. Um, I mean, the music has changed. It, we have all changed, I think, in the band in a certain sense. We've all, you know, gotten better at our instruments mm-hmm. and everything. When you have a routine gig, you get better, you know, that's just part of it. Um, I think uh, we're a little bit more orchestrated than we were before. Uh, when we wrote the EP, it was kind of just like, oh, that works, let's do it. And then with the album, it's like, okay, no, let's take some time and find out every avenue that we should do to make the song sound as good as possible. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Oh, well, I was just saying, we actually started as a uh, three-piece EDM polka band. <laughs> uh, there it goes. That, that really wasn't hitting an audience, so we decided <laughs> to go with, the, go with the soul funk thing. So, well, um, maybe someday you can yeah. go back. Yeah, back. Maybe we'll... Uh, That's going to be the Lucas see. side project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The band was the originally Ringo. called uh, Soul Polka, and then we're like, uh, <laughs> this is not going to work. <laughs> yeah, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, I don't know. You pretty much covered it. We just... Uh, it's everyone's sort of... Uh, evolved as a musician and we've all gotten tighter just playing with each other Mm -hmm. more Um, and that I think definitely shows in the originals um, with how we write the music I think we fit a little more of a stride as far as writing uh, because we've sort of been through that once before already so um, Mm -hmm. even with potential like new ideas and stuff it comes together a lot faster than it used to uh, and as we get a better idea for our sound i guess mm-hmm. um it just it's it's different yeah yeah i mean going off of that just a little bit like the hardest thing for this band and i'm i i say that i tell it to everybody but the hardest thing about this band was to put a genre to it mm. um we go by what funk r&b soul that's kind of like mm-hmm. the general things if casey's watching casey would be like say it's new soul it's new soul and it's, it's <laughs> and you and new you soul. exactly yeah new yeah. soul and, mm-hmm. and i mean that kind of fits it but i mean it just i mean we have on this new album there's rap there's six eight ballads there's you know breakneck tempo funk there's latin influence there's so much different stuff going on in the album so um and we've been working on some new material for the first time and about a year you know we started writing some new stuff in the in the in the basement and everything and we got what a song that's in 11 4 um that we're working on (laughs) uh we have a song that we literally call slow jams but it sounds like a 90s r&b usher song kind of thing (laughs) uh there's a lot of a lot of weird stuff coming out um from the from the soul sherpa basement at the moment with some of the new stuff so yeah the the genre thing has always been a difficult thing Mm -hmm. but yeah, I typically don't really like classifying stuff like that because I, I, I feel like now you can listen to just whatever you want at any yeah. time. So it's like our influences are everything. <laughs> so that's going to come through. Yeah. And if you're creating music, it's like you're influenced by all the music that's come before, everything that's going on right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's all yeah. constantly around you. Yeah. You can hear I mean, anything. I feel like usually the labeling stuff, it ends up being more just like marketing yeah, like, it's it's more like tagging on a yeah, website it's like, so that you're okay, in a category, yeah. yeah. Like, when people are looking for something, they usually want to know more or less, like... What kind of realm it's in. What is yeah. it similar yeah. to that I've already heard? You know, yeah. and then you as far as the, I don't know, it, it, like the genre thing, too, it's, you're almost hesitant to, uh, like, put it under one genre just because they're... 
I don't know, like stereotypes with yeah. every genre or like expectations uh, that you are supposed to follow with the genre. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying. That yeah, was... yeah. There are certain uh, certain cliches and tropes in yeah. the genre, yeah, and sure. if you're not doing that, you don't want to be labeled as that. In Absolutely. case that's a turnoff for somebody, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, on that same vein, uh, what bands would you say you are? influenced by what are you similar to that people might know that they might associate with you well um you know i'll let everybody kind of give some of their influences and stuff like that personal influences of mine when it comes to writing and everything like that i'm a huge uh fan of like old motown records and stuff anything with james jamerson that's where my playing as a bass player kind of comes from is a kind of a james jamerson outlook uh a lot of the inspiration behind making this band uh, the way it is and everything came from a band, Snarky Puppy, if you've yeah, ever heard of them. Huge Snarky Puppy fan. We've um, played a cover of theirs on here. <laughs> I, yeah, Nonprofit <clears throat> played Snarky Puppy at the January oh, concert. Nice. Yeah, they're awesome. And we I've got we got to see them live. Me and me and Lucas got to see them live about two years ago. We got to go backstage and, and meet all the guys. Oh, and stuff. Well, nice. We got to take a shot of whiskey with them, which was super <laughs> cool. Um but uh, yeah, Snarky Puppy is a big one, and then me for my personal stuff. It's just like uh, like huge Stevie Wonder fan, huge, mm-hmm. and that's that, obviously we play some Stevie Wonder covers. But um, that's kind of the closest realm to our type of music. I think is like going back to that kind of '80s funk, you know, with Stevie Wonder and stuff like that. It's the closest way of going to us. I know you. What are, what are your personal kind of influences? Yeah, I like. Uh as far as um, modern bands, maybe uh, like Wolfpack mm-hmm. is a huge. huge uh, Carlos name influence. dropped them earlier. Yeah, yeah I know. I mentioned I, I dirty noticed chicken you sandwich. Them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so they're those guys are awesome. Uh, so we try and have that like kind of groove to it. Um, a band I like a lot. Uh, sort of similar, hard to classify them hiatus coyote okay not familiar um, but that sounds cool yeah, it's a cool check, name check them out they're, yeah, <laughs> check them they're, out. they're really good um uh yeah i don't know nico uh, yeah uh so a lot of what they said you know I'm, I'm into a lot of that but uh you know i'm a guitar player so i listen to a lot of guitar players uh <laughs> jimmy hendrix obviously i mean big one everybody listens to him if you play guitar yeah. <laughs> but uh i love uh, like john mayer john schofield mm-hmm. um Actually, one of my favorite musicians of all time is John Coltrane. Uh, oh yeah, sax player. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just like to to listen to stuff that's got soul. You know, something that's gonna make and you feel super something. bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and the meters. That's uh, that's one of my big like. Oh, nice. You're into influences. the mixed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. Uh, cool. Yeah. All right. We are getting pretty close to the end here. Um, do you do you want to plug the upcoming concert dates you have? You got yeah. some stuff going on so, this month. Uh, we already mentioned that album release is this Friday mm-hmm. uh, at the Mill. Starts at eight o'clock. I think it's an eight dollar cover. Uh, I think the Mill said it's like nineteen plus after ten o'clock or something. I don't know. All the yeah, details. I think that's accurate. Um, don't be young and come to the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh well, I mean you can be young and come to the show, just not if you're under nineteen. Yeah, not under nineteen. <laughs> I guess. Um, and then we are playing. Uh, we are playing. Tailgaters in Cedar Rapids, uh, March 23rd. That's a Friday. Um, we'll be playing all night, and we actually just locked down our. We'll be. Uh, we'll have the Evan Stock band playing as our opener for that show. Then uh, we'll be playing at the Depot Brewery, uh, March 30th in um, Fairfield, Iowa. Okay. Are you positive about the Tailgaters date? Yes. Okay, you've got the 24th on your website. Just so you know. <laughs> Yes, it, it, it was originally the 24th, and we had to rebook it to the 23rd, so I'll have to tell Casey to switch that on the website. All right. Blame cool. it on Casey. <laughs> Blame it on Casey. Um, and just, I mean, like I said, we're not supposed to announce too much, but there's one, uh, and I don't have the exact date for it. Uh, I know there's one that I can probably get away with announcing uh, without people getting mad at me, but we are going to be playing the main stage for the Iowa City Arts Festival. Oh, that's nice. awesome. Year, yeah. On a Sunday, yeah. Nice. So I think it's like 3.30 on a Sunday. Cool. cool. I will probably be there. It'll be pretty sweet, yeah. <laughs> I'll be at the concert on Friday for sure at the mill oh, so yeah, uh cool. listeners cool, cool. if you were there find me and the secret code word <laughs> is i hear i see and if you say that to me i will kiss you on the forehead or you can just say hi 
You can say hi, Justin. If you, you say will... anything else, I won't kiss you. I'm, uh, I'm going to cash in that kiss on the forehead. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See you on Friday, Nico. <laughs> All right, uh, I got some eye here. I see stuff to plug real oh, quick. Yeah. Go for it. So we've got a concert on March 30th, 8 p.m. at Java House. Uh, so far, I can announce that Christian Kripe will be performing, mm-hmm. as well as the band Kaleidoscope. Yeah, cool. Yeah, there's going to be more, but I can't say for sure on the radio yet. Was this uh, Java House, right? Yes, this is at yeah. the Java House. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, so if you're listening and you want to play there... Uh, contact us we might have room (laughs) we might not (laughs) we've got some stuff up in the air uh okay april 20th 8 p.m high ground cafe yes all right carlos and i will be playing that one with uh with with will yeager as wombat wombat our improv trio Uh sick and may 5th we'll be doing something in the somewhere. afternoon this is a saturday it'll be somewhere outside we're getting very close to being able to give you more information on that but it's not quite there yet yeah. so keep listening we'll tell you we'll or tell not. you or and you can just go outside in iowa city and walk around and maybe it'll... if you put your ear to the wind you might hear <laughs> some music uh i'll be back here in the studio next sunday 7 p.m march 11th not sure what i'm gonna do yet might have a guest might not all right who knows I might be here. I might not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've got a website, IHearIC.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, every radio show gets recorded and released as a podcast, which is up on iTunes, Google Play, Mixcloud. And you can subscribe there and look at the episode descriptions for links to a bunch of information about the people that we play on the show. All right. Sweet yeah <laughs> we've got a couple minutes left before eight o'clock you want to play one more tune sure um what do you guys think i mean i'd like to say power trip but it, it's up to you guys if you guys want to play that one like i said it's awesome. got it's got it's one one blibbit <laughs> oh oh it's got a oh it's got some profanity it's got profanity yes <laughs> uh if you want a song that doesn't have profanity that's left on the record we could do acceptance Acceptance, that's a good closer, yeah. yeah. You want to yeah. go with that? Okay. That's a good finale. I'm going to play it safe and yeah. not play profanity yes. on the air. That's probably since a good idea. Fair. Since we discussed it on the mics, yes. it's obvious that I knew it was coming. <laughs> so like, I can't pretend I didn't yes. know. And so. if you won your profanity, this uh, music video. So Yeah, go check, check the yep. music yep. video where the profanity is just on and mm-hmm. it's, it's on. Yeah. And in two days, you can stream the album, you can buy the album, and you'll hear it in all of its... Yes profane glory (laughs) saying right all right we're gonna close the show with soul sherpa's acceptance thanks for listening tune in next week and i'll see you at soul sherpa's show on friday perhaps yeah Yeah. all right (laughs) good night everybody Hey, just a just a note. I played the wrong track. Here's acceptance instead. There. Oh, I accept responsibility for falling on my ass in my old thoughts. The present was my past, but those things won't. As long as we are aware of our respectful places in this fast-paced world And I want to feel that I belong with you I'm so amazed at the strength you exude in my whole life I was never good enough for my own Complete man when I'm with you. And acceptance is a two way street that you have allowed me to walk on a special journey that turned me around. And acceptance is a two way street with conflicting. Divine this team If there is one thing I like to see It is true happiness
conflict and I see lies about the conflict. I've come to the realization that turning a blind eye to it only hurts me in the end. And I can't solve all the world's problems, but I can surely bridge the gap of dissension in my own city, in my own neighborhood, in my own house, and in my own mind. I feel that people can be possessive with folks and that's silly to me. Everything is changing so quickly in this beautiful world that I cannot help but cherish every moment I have with people and respect their differences, because that's what makes us great. Who will say this will last forever? I gotta get up every day and remind myself. Sound Alternative 897 KRUI. KRUI, Iowa City.